Hey, welcome to a, another uh, educational robot adventures uh, educationification. Uh, today I'm going to do a little bit about airbrushing. It's a question I get a lot. Uh, dumbasses, stop watching. Uh, everyone else, check it out. Alright, welcome to another Robot Adventures uh, informative uh, information of things that I want to inform you about. So, let's see, let me give you a little hey, camp high with that right there, so. Now, I know that I did this re re review long ago. But, uh, yeah, well, this is one of the videos that I get a lot of questions about. How to do airbrushing, How what is airbrushing, you know, give me some. Today, just today, I got two questions about airbrushing. I was like, I mean, there's so many people doing airbrushing. I don't know why they asked me, but uh, I thought I'd just give it another go and just... Uh, try the, you know, what I've learned from a year and a half ago, and thought I'd uh, just uh, tell you what is airbrushing and the basics of airbrushing and stuff like that, without going into too much detail about uh, uh, how to mix paints and techniques and applications and I think that stuff you have to find out on your own. Just what is, you know, what is airbrush and how do you get started? I think that's what I've covered today. Uh, I think I can do it in maybe about 15 minutes, I'm hoping. But, uh, yeah, I'm hoping. So I thought I'd start off with some of the applications of airbrushing. So why is airbrushing better? than just using a regular brush. I mean, airbrush or brush, which one is better? Yeah. So, I thought I'd show you a little bit, and I mean, of course I'm no, prof I'm not a professional. I just do this as a hobby, but, mm, I just thought I'd show you a little bit of uh, a comparison here. Let's see if I can get that up there. So, I think you can see there that the bottom one is, uh, is done by brush, and the top one is done by airbrush. Uh, other things I'd like to point out, that silver, brush. All the black and the blue, airbrush. You can see what we got is a is a consistency of color, and the application of that color is uniformed. That's one of the advantages of airbrushing. As you can see there, very clearly. There's a there's a big blue mistake right there, right next to the silver. So that was of course trying to I tried to touch that up with a with a brush. That didn't that didn't work very well. So yeah, Br brushing is nice and good, but I think the ability to coat a figure evenly. I think you're gonna have to go with airbrush. Uh, this is just my hobby, my uh, application of the airbrush. But yeah, you can you can transform a figure. That shine right there, that's that that's actually a, a polish I use to give. Uh, any kind of figure, a, a kind of a metallic kind of finish. It's not really to do with 
the paint or anything, but it does have that nice sh sheen, the shine. So that's that's not actually paint. That's using a uh, product that I picked up here in Japan, which makes a. Uh, let's see if we can get a focus on that. But uh, it just makes things uh get that metallic kind of finish to it. It's a nice product, nice product, but uh, I think it's a thousand bucks. It gives any kind of black thing a, a nice metallic finish. Um, yeah, so those are the applications versus brush, so things to consider when you when you come back. When you want to do a like a custom paint job on a figure or something like that. Um, let's see. Uh, I want to get into the different types of airbrushes. Uh, and like I said, I'm not a professional, but I play one on YouTube. So <laughs> this is called a, a single action airbrush. And uh, this is actually, I think it's called the MK dash uh, MK hyphen zero five. I'm I'm thinking that's what the it's called. I don't remember exactly. Uh, this is uh, one of your entry model airbrushes. It's a single action, which means once you press this button, the air starts shooting out of there. And the air and the and the paint, boom, 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 in one action. Uh, and that's what happens. Uh, this one is a little bit more expensive than your uh, entry level brush. It does have a, I, I what I call, I, I'm not sure the technical name, but I think it's some some kind of air regulator. So the amount of air that is. Uh, uh, coming out of the brush can be adjusted if I can get a yeah there you go it's got a little like a, a whole bunch or a little bit so if you got it in full blast you know you got a lot of air and a big spray coming out if you got a little tiny little bit of air you just got like a l small mist so the physical properties of airbrushing uh, at least in this one you got a low pressure you got air shooting over this nozzle this this little orange nozzle creating a low pressure system and uh, to balance uh, there's another small nozzle in I don't know if you can see that let's see if I can point to it with something right there right there that's an intake so you'll get the paint moving and the paint moving up through there out that way so, uh, what you have to do with this system is you have to adjust the height of this screw to create the best low pressure system and then shoot out the paint and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, that's, that's that system. It's nice. The advantages to this are uh, quick paint swapping so you would just let's see if I can do this you would just there's no wine or anything I'm gonna knock over you just pull this there you go you you detach that you just get another one of these with a different paint color this one's blue of course and then uh, I mean since in a, it's an external mixture you wouldn't have any contamination from the other paint. So you just, you know, slide the next one in and you continue painting. Very, very quick. Although you'd have to adjust the height. Oh, shit. You'd have to adjust the height of that. And make sure you're, you're the, the quality of spray is what you want. And, you know, so. I'm going to focus on that again. Okay, well, it's a little bit out of focus. Um yeah that's what you're dealing with there another thing 
sometimes this orange nozzle gets clogged up so you have to use a wire this is a 0.03 millimeter uh, nozzle you'd have to get a wire which is even smaller than that to stick in there and make sure it's unclogged and it clogs up quite frequently I don't know if it's clogged now I'm gonna try to spray with it and if it's clogged well then I'll have to try to unclog it and the disadvantage to that is if you're if you're using a compressed air can you're gonna to have to run through the air just to find the right balance and make sure it's clogged or unclogged so unless you have an air compressor like this thing then you're gonna be running through cans of air and those are gonna cost you between maybe five and seven bucks at least that's what they cost here in Japan so yeah I mean if you're just gonna just do something very quickly then I think it's okay but if you're gonna really get into airbrushing then I'm really suggesting go ahead and get an air compressor however an air compressor the range on the price is a little wide I'd say so you can get a maybe a a fairly large air compressor for about a hundred bucks or 150 bucks or you can get one of these small ones this one is about 200 bucks it's really compact and so you know you're you can get a little larger one and so yeah, uh, you have to look, research into the cost of these things, but you have to balance how much uh, you're going to be airbrushing and the cost of cans and stuff like that, uh, compressed cans and air cans and something to think about there. If you consider what you have to consider with the consideration that's due to the to the you know to the object, and you think about it after you consider that thing. Well, then you can figure out what you should think about and then consider buying what you need to do. And that's what I say. So, let's see. Let's see if I can get some sprayage going. I'm going to try to spray my finger here. No, I don't know if I can do this on camera here. Oh, okay. So, so apparently it's clogged. I'm gonna adjust it a little bit. No, no, no. No. Yeah, it's plugged. So, yeah. So you need to take your little wire and stick it in there. If I can get it. Okay. I think I. I, I think it's. Um, hopefully it will unclog. Alright. Oh, Alright, there you go. It starts shooting over here. Alright, there you go. There you go. So. Yay, um, my hands are all blue now. So that's uh, this single action type of brush. It's got its advantages, its disadvantages. Cost-wise, it's probably the cheapest, but unless you got an air compressor, you're looking at uh, wasting money on, you know, adjusting it. So, something to think about. Let's see, let's go on to the next one. And, I'll turn off this air compressor here. Um, the next one is going to be this... Uh, I guess I'll put this up here. This is another, this is what we call a dual, uh, us in the business, us in the industry. Yeah, yeah, my dick is so small. Yeah, baby, my tits are so weak. My ball satchel is so hairy. Uh, are those cool things to say? I'm not really sure, but I said them. Um, so, this is dual action. 
And people who are not familiar with my videos are going, what the fuck is this guy talking about? <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway. Uh, you push down for to start the air. You pull back to retract the needle. Within here, within inside of here, there's a needle blocking the paint flow and not allowing the, the paint to come out or so what happens is you take a in this in this airbrush you can put the the paint you know under here like that like so so it's so it's so nice and good um and uh which is good and nice uh, come on baby switch over like that um, however this is an internal mixture it's internal so that means the if you're spraying black it's gonna mix inside of the airbrush and then if you switch over to red or white or something you're still gonna have black paint inside here so you're gonna have to run it for a while to make sure you clear out all the all the paint inside so unless you clean it which is, uh, I mean, it kind of defeats the purpose of having the, like that kind of swappability, quickie, quick, uh, kind of release kind of action there. Well, that, well, that exit, uh, no, that's not even going to take it. No focus, auto focus. Um, this one, I, it does not come with, uh, as you can see, it doesn't come with, a air regulator on the brush but you can buy an external like in the line kind of uh, this is removable here the airbrush is actually just this piece but you can a a attach an adapter in which which will allow you to regulate the amount of air going through the brush through here and uh, yeah, the, the, this is uh, running around about a hundred bucks, a hundred twenty bucks. It's nice, however, uh, the idea is nice. However, uh, the the quality of the of these these bottles is really kind of crap. Uh, you got this shiny metal part, which goes over the cap. Of essentially just just a a paint bottle, and I mean, it's so so many times I've just you know the 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 cap and the metal piece separate. There's no connection there, so you're just spinning this thing in the 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 bottle the paint won't uh, release from the from the airbrush so it's a really kind of annoying kind of situation you lose all of the expected uh, paint change capability speed so I'm not really recommending this type of brush uh, what I would like to do is just take this component this is what's inside the this uh, is this, of course this part here yeah I mean one another thing about the Mr. Hobby this this piece here only fits these type of uh, these type of uh, Mr. Colors which is okay but they also sell a Mr. Hobby spray bottle here, oversized, and they sell a, another like a graduated Mr. Hobby mixing bottle. Basically, if you just take this thing, drill a hole through here, you got the same effect, and and in a much larger uh, quantity. So I mean, if Mr. Hobby were smart. They would just release 
uh, a way to, you know, tap the airbrush and use these other different size bottles. So, what I plan to do personally is just drill a hole through the lid of these of these bottles and just put a gasket in and then just paint, you know, using these huge ass bottles instead of you know, going with these little tiny fuckers which is kind of a pain in the ass but uh, yeah, it's just kind of annoying so yeah, that airbrush is not all that great we're not cooking with bacon with that one jello, bacon and jello and finally, let's get on to the last one here, this dual action uh, uh, cup type. This one has the, the air regulator right there. You can, it's on the brush, so you can adjust the amount of air that goes through there. I don't have an air regular, air regulator right here. This is just an air filter. Similar to this, similar to this has an air filter, but also with an air regulator. So, and I'm not really sure that's what it's called an air regulator, but that's what I'm calling it. Uh, cups, some airbrushes have different size cups. Some have removable cups. Uh, the cup size uh, I don't really feel it's that important. Let's see, yeah, it's not really that important. Uh, if you're going to be swapping out paints regularly or quickly, uh, because uh, you can use these uh, these droppers just to put in like two or three drops of the paint you want to do. So, yeah, I just put in two or three drops and then uh, that paint runs out. Well, then just put in two or three drops of something else or something like that. So, I don't really think cup size is all that important. Uh, yeah. Some, some cups are small. I guess it's, I guess it's just personal preference, but yeah, that's pretty much, uh, it about airbrushes. Um, nozzle size here is important. This is a 2.2 millimeter nozzle. That other airbrush I, I showed you earlier, Mr. Hobby, is a, I think you can see there, a 0.3 millimeter double action, dual action kind of, uh, so the the smaller the nozzle size, of course, the uh, the finer the spray, the finer the lines, the bigger the nozzle size, like a five millimeter or something like that, point five, point zero, or point five, yeah, millimeter is gonna be, you know, pretty wide. So if you're gonna be spraying large objects, then you want a larger you know, air, larger nozzle size to, you know, cover that thing quickly. You know, but if you're doing fine, fine detailed work, well then. But, uh, yeah, that's about, uh, all I can tell you about airbrushes. Uh, I think I covered everything. Uh, which do I prefer? This is my favorite one here, the dual action with the little cup. I just drop shit in there. And uh, it's easy to swap out colors. Yeah, so this is my favorite one. Uh, it's easy to clean. Uh, if I were going to recommend uh, one of these, an airbrush, uh, if you had this, I would say dual ac dual action or probably double action is probably the way to go with that with uh, some kind of air filter in the line and some kind of air regulator I'm thinking air regulation is probably for maybe intermediate 
or you know, of course advanced uh, airbrushing but uh, you know if you can pick it up while you're a beginner and if you're really going to get into it then I'd recommend that uh, that just gives you a little bit of more control over how much air and the adjustment of air and stuff like that so um, and yeah single action are good for are good for uh, you know beginners but uh, you know you're gonna waste money on the on the compressed air can so that's kinda bad uh, as far as name brands go I I couldn't tell you I got a Mr. Hobby Mo most of my things are Mr. Hobby uh, Iwata uh, does make a lot of airbrushes and they do have a large line Airtex makes a bunch of airbrushes uh, yeah just get online and check out uh, airbrushes you'll find a whole bunch of them I think you know if you're spending a hundred bucks on an airbrush you're pretty much gonna get a good airbrush uh, if you're spending like twenty bucks or something like that or thirty bucks you're gonna get you know plasticky kind of piece of something or other uh, one thing I'd say uh, you should check into the um, into the into the replacement parts if you're really concerned about it I, I know Airtex does sell replacement needles which uh, one of the big things about needles is uh, you can bend them and if you bend your needle you're pretty much fucked so you you have to buy a new airbrush because the other airbrush Mr. Hobby doesn't sell replacement needles so I think a needle, I don't know, it might be about 20 bucks or something like that. I'm not really sure. 10 bucks? I'm not sure. But if you're going to be like fucking around and bending your needle, well then, I mean, everybody likes to bend their needle. I mean, I, I broke my, I grabbed hold of my needle the other day with both hands and I was thinking about some really sexy girl and I just twisted it too much and, you know, because my penis is the size of a needle. That my needle penis as you can see 27 minutes into this review and I'm talking about my dick is small like a needle or like a paintbrush there you go uh, that, I think that's pretty much all I can tell you about fucking airbrushing uh, wear a mask wear goggles fucking grab hold of your nipples when you feel tired just like can stick your pinky in your asshole, I guess. I don't know. Uh, some people like ice cubes. Some people like, uh, you know, clothespins. You know, to each their own, uh, you know, Optimus Prime is not my favorite. Uh, I'm more of an Ultra Magnus fan. Uh, Hound is probably my favorite. Uh, Sometimes when I eat too much salad, I shit like really runny shit. I eat too much, too many peanuts, kind of, kind of lumpy. Uh, the airbrushing is fun. Have fun. Fucking yeah, do whatever the fuck you want. But I hope this has been informative. And uh, if you have any questions, post them down there. All right, guys, come by. Talk to you guys later. Bye bye. I hit the wrong button.